Back in the days when I was young and a little too sure of myself, Yanacraw Island was a remote and isolated corner of America, forgotten by history, untouched by the hand of modern man. the water and a world away, the school board of Beaumont County, South Carolina was in command of the island's education. It was here, on the mainland, that I first learned of Yamacraw and his children. Dr. Henry Piedmont, the superintendent of schools in Beaumont County, was a Milltown kid who'd scratched his way to the top and never looked back. We first met in the summer of 1969. Although I'd graduated from a military academy, I'd elected to join the Peace Corps. But when that option suddenly fell through... So you've turned to teacher? Well, I'm already a teacher, sir. Were a teacher, high school, two years, where you were relieved of your duties as a basketball coach. Yeah, well, I guess I favored the better players, who happen to be black. Son, they tell me I run the most democratic school system in the country. That little gesture he just made kind of reminded you of me, didn't it, son? How dare you use that tone with a superior officer? No wonder you're not a Marine. You don't have it in you. Turned out to be a nothing. A smart mouth, nobody without a job. Your father was in the military, that right? Yes, sir. United States Marine Corps, sir. Then you are familiar with the concept chain of command. Huh? Yes, I am, sir. Mr. Conroy, do you know why you came here today? Well, I want to teach you Yammer Cross, sir. Yam a crawl. The A is soft. Yam a crawl. Yam a crawl. In any event, that's not the reason. That's not the real reason. Would you care to know? Oh, you mean the real, real reason? Divine guidance. Divine guidance. Mr. Conroy, you're too young and you're too naive to realize this now, but I believe that is the real reason you came to me today. You see, son, I've been praying for an answer to the problems that confront Yamagra. It's worried me sick, boy. Where was I going to find somebody who was willing to live and work among those islanders? Somebody who could dedicate himself to the education of those beautiful, beautiful children. Live among them, sir? I'm not sure. I want you to go there. I want you to move around, have a look-see. And I want you to tell me what you think. Will you do that for me? <laughs> My appointed navigator was Zeke Skimberry, a local fisherman who'd spent his life on the river. He could judge her moods and read her signs better than any man in the region. Thanks for the ride, Mr. Skimberry. Pat Conroy. Welcome. Ida, this here's Pat Conroy. Hey, Luther, you got any 25s? And bring me a Spanish if you got it. Coming right up. Mr. Conroy. Wife, Ida. That queen trigger, ever seen one of them? Nope. Best eating fish in the sea. Good catch. For many years, Ezra Bennington had been in charge of the school district that included Yamacraw Island. Yeah, thank you, Zeke. Well, Mr. Conroy, it is a great pleasure to meet you. Well, it's good to meet you, sir. 
And you, sir, are gonna love Yembro. I expect I will. When Bennington's domain was absorbed by Beaumont County, Piedmont had made him Deputy Superintendent, a lofty title for a position that amounted to little more than local errand boy. There was a time when the Yamacraw oysters were well famous. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What happened? Well, you know, perils of modern days, and, you know, most folks moving off, and the ones left behind, well, they're just living off what the island provides. Still kind of primitive then, huh? Well, I helped put an electricity a few years back. For the sake of the children. And Lord knows I've worked to get those kids educated. I love them as my own, actually. Am I right about that, Zeke? Yes, sir, Mr. Bennington. <clears throat> On the suckies. Hello, preacher man. That's a new teacher. Man, new teacher coming. We're gonna be late. I don't care about no teacher man. What if I commute? If I had my own boat? No. Uh. You'd never be able to navigate these waters. Oh, I'm sure I can learn. No, no, Zeke, Zeke's got the only boat comes out here. He's the only man that can get us through all of this stuff. How about the kids? Don't they ever get off the island? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've crossed over the mainland eventually. I mean, there's no, no work on Yamacraw. Mr. Conway, Yamacraw is just one big old alligator. I've been wrestling with this for years and, and years and years. Mrs. Brown was there first decent teacher that I could get to live here full time. Come on, join the train game. You all will pay attention and follow my instructions. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. white folks on the island were Ted Stone and his wife. Somehow, being a decorated veteran of World War II, qualified Ted to be chief of police, fire marshal, and game warden. Ted, this is Pat Conroy. Come look at our school. Mr. Stone? He also delivered the mail for his wife, Lou, the <laughs> official postmistress, who was a mechanic at heart and drove the Yamacraw school bus. Ew. Hey, Conroy here. Good morning, ma'am. I understand you all folks know around here. That a fact. <laughs> you all live here long, Mr. Stone? Long enough. Y'all sit up straight. Mind your manners. Yes, ma'am. Don't act your color. Oh. Stop driving, Ted. 
caught you here, didn't I? Yeah, barely. Mr. Bennington, what an honor it is to have you visit with us, sir. Could this possibly be our new addition? Well, if he accepts our offer, which I am certain that he will once he gets to know you, Mrs. Brown. <laughs> uh, Mr. Conroy? Welcome overseas, Mr. Conroy. Thank you very much. And you can just call me Pat. Things are rough overseas, Mr. Conroy. Missionary work is what it is. Mr. Bennings is the only one who understands. Hell yeah. <laughs> Children, say good morning to Mr. Bennington. Good morning, Mr. Bennington. And to Mr. Conroy. Good morning, Mr. Conroy. Roy. 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 You know, I used to go to school just like this one. That's the truth. Yeah, one room. Hmm? Hot belly in the corner, right over there. <laughs> and look where I got, huh? Now, you itty bits, now you listen hard to Mrs. Brown, and hopefully, Mr. Conroy, and you work even harder, huh? We well, are all gonna get to be big and important, just like me, hmm? Are y'all gonna do that? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> Bless you, Esther. I knew you could bring the little ones up. I try, Mr. Bennington. I do try. Barbara and I met six months after her husband died. She believed in a contented home, a happy family, admired order, and used a napkin. I used the back of my hand and thrived on chaos. But we fell in love anyway and planned to be married later that fall. So, did you get it? Get what? <laughs> Don't be a dork, Conroy. Yeah, quit being a dork. You quit being a dork, huh? Huh? Well, you're looking at the number two educator. Yeah, I'm crying. Way to go, Conroy. Very cool. Night, night, sweetie pie. I got a split. What's that? Fifth grade lesson plan? It's just as hard as high school, maybe harder. You'll see. Are you trying to tell me I can't get by my winning Conroy charm? I just don't understand why you can't commute. It's not that far across the river. Well, they want me to be sort of a presence. Anyway, they tell me there's no boat. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. Do they know you're getting married in two months? What about after that? I... That's crazy, seriously. Tell me about it, I know. In, in case you don't remember, there's a little girl up there that still calls you that man. She needs her daddy, who's going to be you, by the way. I know, I know. I'll get on their case. Had to get the job first, right? Mm-hmm. Hang on, hang on. One teacher to another. <laughs> Wow. I love you. Really? You should I love check you. it out. Mm-hmm. Check it out. It saved me more than once. I mean, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I need my own boat. Thanks, Mr. Stone. Appreciate it. You know, a lot of 
gals ain't got hair as long as you. Have you ever taught colored children before, Mr. Conroy? Well, for two years, I At the elementary level. No, I haven't. You're going to have the older grades, five through eight. Now, treat them stern, be tough, keep them hard at the work, or they'll run you right out the door. Mrs. Brown, I You'll think... You'll be in here. This is great. I know colored people better than you do. Thank you to monitor that door, Ethel. I am one myself, in case you hadn't noticed. That is why I know you have to step on them. Step on them every day and keep stepping on them. If you have any trouble, Professor Medicine is right next door. In your seats, eyes ahead, and close your mouths. This man got ugly. You are. All right, all right. Break it up. Settle down, everybody. Good morning, my young geniuses of Yamacra. Are you all ready to learn today? Well, you're gonna be. And you know what we're gonna start with? We're gonna start with my name, Mr. Conroy. Can you say it? Let's hear it. Conroy. We'll break it up in two parts. Mr. Conroy. Mr. Conroy. Most of them have slow brains. But you all can learn if you work. If you stop being such lazy, lazy people. Now, I know some of you in here were born simple-minded. You know who you are. And we know that you can't help being that way. That just means you got to work even harder than your lazy, lazy friends. Simple-minded people have to be pushed and whipped harder than anybody. Everybody start shaking. Everybody shake loose, huh? Fingertips down to your toes, shake your hips, everything. We're gonna dust the cobwebs off those smart little brains. Okay, have a seat. Very good. Don't y'all feel awake now? No. All right, you see those papers and pencils in front of you there? I want to know everything about y'all. I want to know what you like and what you don't like and what makes you tick. Tick, 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 tick. No, no trust me now. Okay, so for the next 20 minutes, I want you to write down everything about yourselves. Okay? Ready, set, go. Seriously, grab your pencils, grab your pencils. Everybody, grab your pencils. Everybody. And just start writing down everything, all about yourselves. I want, you, don't sweat the grammar, the spelling, any of that nonsense. Just get to writing. Write it down. Everything. Don't worry about a thing. Charles. I'm cool like ice. Mary. Oscar, sir. Cindy Lou. Frank. Lincoln. Lincoln. What country do we live in? Uh. What's the name of this grand old red, white, and blue nation of ours, huh? Land of the free, home of the brave, place you all were born? Come on, gang. Somebody must know what country we live in. Oh, no. Um, uh -oh. America, America, does that ring a bell? No. No? No. No one here has ever heard of the United States of America? Oh, yeah. I hit it and I pledge allegiance. Yes, pledge of allegiance. Very good, Ethel. Thank you, sir. 
excuse me. Excuse me. Young man? Yes, sir. What's your name? Saul, sir. Saul, do you know who the first president of the United States was? George Washington. Right on, Saul. It's very good. Just imagine how well you do if you paid a little more attention in here. Now, okay, 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 okay. Hey, hey, now that we're on a roll, everybody, now that we're on a roll, I want someone to tell me the name of that big old ocean that washes up on the far side of Yamacraw. That big old body of water. Body? I ain't seen nobody. Nobody ain't seen nobody. That's what the teacher. Very good, Charles. Thank you. No, but what I mean is, I mean the body of water. No. Okay. Okay. Now, this is the mainland right here. And you all live on an island. You know that, right? You know that you live on an island? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Now, this is the mainland. This is the island. This here is the river. Now, it's pretty wide, but you can still see the land on the other side. And then all of this over here is what you call an ocean. Because it's so big that you can't see any land on the other side. And the name of this ocean is uh, the Atlantic. A-T-L-A-N-T-I-C. Atlantic. So, for $64 million, who can tell me? The name of that big old body of water that washes up on the far side of Yamacraw. Atlantic. All right, Atlantic. Now everybody, everybody. Atlantic. Very good. My pre-Yamacraw theory of teaching was pretty basic. I figured a good teacher had to show a bit of insanity, or at least look as if he was out of control, if he wanted to catch and hold the attention of his students. I'm George Washington, and I'm the leader of the Continental Army, and I'm gonna whoop you. Well, you people can't beat the British Army. It's the greatest army in the whole world. Oh, yeah? Ah! Oh, oh, oh. Ah! That's cheating. I wasn't ready. Welcome to America, Mr. King. Ah! Bam. All right, so this is a set shot, okay? You want to have your knees bent, and when you get your arm up, you want this to make an L, all right? And you go up, and you make it. All right, Lincoln, bring it back here. All right, now you guys all get a turn, all right? But Lincoln, you go first. Oh, awful gibberish, isn't it? Lord knows I have tried to beat it out of them. What I mean is, what language is it? Gullah dialect. It goes all the way back to the slavery days. Left over from Africa. Go 
smirk. You stand up. Prophet. You and uh, Al Sadas on Yammer Croft. You better get used to it. Come on. Oh. You stand up for What you want? I thought I'd introduce myself. I know who you is, teacher man. <laughs> My name's Conroy. Pat Conroy. No matter what you name, what you teach, that what matter. You do right with my grands, or I'm gonna have to get old Betsy out of the house and drop you that. <laughs> well, that's why I'm here, ma'am. I'm gonna do my best. Will you come? They send old Miss Glover out to pasture. For 40 years, that's all she say. I do my best. She never teach nobody around here nothing. Except yes, sir, and no, sir. Well, I'm gonna change all that, ma'am. But I can't do it alone. Need some support. I want to get the parents involved. Finally, I started to get the picture. I was a foreigner in Yamacraw the same way the children were foreigners in America. The parents knew firsthand that sitting in that schoolhouse led nowhere and they'd pass their failed dreams along to their kids. That's right, then we'll just slide them into like a little semi-circle. Okay. All right, gang. All right. All right, gang, have a seat, have a seat. Okay, okay. What I figure is if we're gonna spend a whole year together, we better get to know each other. So we're gonna spend the day today, the entire day, just talking. About what we talking, teacher? Yeah, yeah. 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 what we talking about? Well, we're gonna talk about what you like, what you don't like, what turns you crank, you know, anything that you want, really. So, we don't know about no crank. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> what I mean is, you know what, um, how about we just start? Okay. Okay, uh, I guess I'll go first, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was born poor, white, and ugly. He got that, he got that right. But see, I've grown up, I'm still poor, I'm still white. And you're still ugly. <laughs> All right. So, let's see, uh, I've got... Four I told brothers, them about my mother and how she loved books, uh, my used to and how my father flew military. jets, and my four brothers and two sisters, <laughs> about how much I loved basketball, and that I was getting married to Barbara, who had a daughter named Jenny, and how her husband died, and all about our little yellow car that looked like a bug and was made in a country called Germany on the other side of the... Atlantic! Good. Then Cindy Lou Good. told me all about you scrinch and squirrels. Squirrel. You just stuck you right on the stuck and then pump over the hot fire and then the fur. All of a sudden you scrunch right up and then you just brush you off else if you just want fry you just slip the belly and then peels the scum box so you all smooth. Just like a grape. <laughs> Yuck! Oh, he's so good. Hey, teach me. Mrs. Conroy, you ever seen a snake milk a cow? <laughs> no, that's bull. Snake can't milk no bull, man. Well, can't milk no cow neither. Hey, I seen it. Me yeah. too. It wicked. Has anybody else in here witnessed this bovine phenomenon? I seen it. You know, one time I seen one so big, he milk a cow dry. Yeah, that's right. You dry, swear? Man. Yes, ma'am. Ethel, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ethel, come on. What's the truth? Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Conroy. <laughs> it's sure, right? I've seen plenty of snake milk cows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do they take that milk and put it in bottles and then sell it at the store? Ah, oh, man. No, they suck it right up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, here comes the news. <laughs> hey, 
Have you heard this story about the snake? You are going to account? lose the respect of those children. I don't... Your approach. Oh. Can't they have a little fun, too? I have already told you about colored children. They need whipping. They understand whipping. Believe me. Well, <clears throat> ma'am, I can understand your point of view. Okay, to... that's good. These are your textbooks. <laughs> textbooks? No. The state requires the students to read these books. Mrs. Brown, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but those kids don't know what country that they live in. They can't recite the alphabet. They can't spell their own name. They can't add two and two, and you expect That's them to read from this book? That's beside the point. The state requires them to read the books. Mrs. Brown, what if they can't? Mr. Conroy, your job is to make them. There's a sign up the road that says there are uh, libraries this way. I ain't open. Oh, but there is one. Of course. Well, could you tell me the hours and then maybe I'll come... You want a book? Uh, no, I just want... Libraries are for books. Now, you want a book, I'll open it up. You want to just look, I ain't got time. Oh, so you mean that you're the... Li really hates Nazis. You get tax money back for giving away things to education. So I got Ted to donate his entire collection. <laughs> Not that any of them young has ever come in here and raid them. You know, I don't think those kids know too much about war. Well, I say a book's a book. How are you getting along with Miss Brown? Okay. Not bad. Ask me. That woman's a savior. At least she teaches them ragamuffins some manners. How to show respect. Yeah, she does that all right. Oh, honey, them doors ain't been open in I don't know how long. Oh, whoa. What is all this? Come last year from the state. I was gonna send it all back, but heck, it was free. Well, thanks to you, Yamakura Island has just entered the audiovisual age. All right, everybody knows who this is, right? Saul, we talked about him. Who that be? He was the head of the Continental Army. Who is that? George Washington. George Washington. Who that? By looking at her crown, you can tell she's a royalty. Who is it? Who she is? That's Queen Elizabeth. Have you ever heard of Napoleon? Desi Arnaz, Lucille Ball? This is our 16th president. We talked about this man just recently. He's our president right now, 1969. Who that? Who that? Richard Nixon. All right, greatest baseball player in the major leagues. Center fielder for the Giants. No one? That was Willie Mays. Oh, 
Miss Brown, let me handle this one, okay? Why should I? Well, because, you know what? Because Why you, should I, Conroy? Because you are right. You are so incredibly, absolutely right. I'm, I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna take charge of these kids, I'm gonna kick a few rear ends, I'm gonna show them who's boss. I'm gonna take charge. I'm a soul man. Charles, Charles, Charles. What is that? What are you doing there? Soul, sir. Is that what you call that? You call that soul? Yes, sir. Well, I gotta tell you, Charles. You're one groovy dude. What's that, groovy? Groovy? Well, that means you're cool, man. Oh, cool, 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 Charles. Yeah, what do you yeah, think? Charles, oh, man, Charles, can you call? Yeah. Yeah. Who else wants to give it a shot? To trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to wear upon his promise, and to know the saints, the Lord. All the rest of that day, the children, whose physical lives were ruled by a river, showed me how their imaginations knew no bounds. Saying and carrying on like that is a waste of time. If you do not follow the curriculum, I'm going to have to report you. Report me. As principal of the school, the proper education of these children is my responsibility. Oh, well, that's a relief. I thought I was going to have to do it. Do what? To report that somehow the educational process here, that most kids in this school, by the time they get to the senior grades, are completely illiterate. Oh, that's not my doing. Does Piedmont know? I expect so. But then it is not your job to tell him. And why is that? Chain of command. Chain of command? That's the rule. Oh, yeah. The rule. I gotta tell you, Mrs. Brown, me and rules, we don't get along too well. Miss Conroy, rules and I. Mr. Conroy. Pleasure. We'll start to bother you on Saturday. Sam? Don't mind them. They're kind of fussy about the protocol and the dress code around here. So tell me about Yamacraw. Things going all right? Uh, no, sir. It's not all right at all. Though. I think there's something I want to tell you about that. I'm all ears, boy. While at Columbia University, Piedmont had studied books on administrative procedure. Hell, they don't even know Every thesis he read stressed how the successful superintendent demanded strict adherence to the... Chain of command, boy. You told me you understood the concept. 
I do, sir. I do. But I thought that you'd want to know about that. You know, you were a godsend to me. Yeah, you mentioned Day that. and night, I prayed for an answer to the conundrum of Yamacraw, and then you come here to my doorway, out of the blue, a miracle. Yeah, sir, but now that I've been there... Yeah, now that you've been there, you won't let me down. Uh, no, that's I not it at all. it's none of my business, and maybe this is a matter between you and your conscience, but I do not understand how you can disappoint those little children. No, now, listen to me, boy. It's a gift to listen. Don't you know you're their salvation? You're their hope. And I want to tell you something else, though I believe you're too young and you're too naive to understand this. But from the bottom of my heart, I know that Yamacraw is your divine calling. You stay strong, boy. Stay strong. Take your own boat out here if you don't know the water. Really? Over due east. More than simply pointing out the underwater hazards, Zeke guided my path toward an awareness of the ebb and flow of the tides. Then he directed my attention to the coming of the sun. That tune came from the 50 greatest all-time classical hits. Huh? You're excited, I can see that. <laughs> okay, now this, this next number is gonna be by this long-haired cat named Beethoven. Okay, and what's his name? Beethoven, you got it. All right, good, that's right. Now this guy wrote some pretty heavy tunes. He came from Germany. This is Germany. It's on the continent of Europe. And what's the name of that continent? Europe. 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 All right, all right. You guys are hip. You're getting it. OK, now this song about Beethoven is one of his most famous songs. It's all about how death was this ghost that was coming to his house and started knocking on his door. Now, Beethoven, he got to thinking. If something this heavy was going to come and knock on his door, it might sound like Dun, 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 dun. Okay, everybody. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Is everybody ready? Want to hear Death Ghost? Yeah! yeah. I, 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 I'm ready for that ghost. Dun, 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 dun. 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 Dun, 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 dun. Dun, all right, how about this one? Take a listen to this. <laughs> no, but if you listen, if you listen, this song is like what a mama might sing when she wants her baby to go to sleep. Do y'all want to know a secret? You guys learn as good and as fast as anyone I've known my whole life. Really smart. You are. You are smart. You, are. you know what? From now on, you guys are going to become the most advanced scholars on classical music out of any school in all of Beaumont County. So huh? How does that sound? Right. Huh? How does that sound? Is that right? Yes, 
Right. And we're gonna test those brains right now. We're gonna test. Yes. Alright, your first test. Very good, you guys. That's good. I can't believe this just a while ago. It was way off and now it's two weeks away. Thirteen days. It's amazing. Hey. What do you think? Too fussy? Maybe not orchids. Hello? Anyone home? I'm sorry, babe. I just, uh... You know, I gotta get these kids off the island, break this cycle. Here you go, sweetie. I gotta get them, you know? I gotta connect them to the world. Otherwise, they're gonna get eaten alive by people even less enlightened than Piedmont and Bennington. But you can't because... Because the number one educator in Hammercraw, she's a case. Well, maybe the old Conroy style isn't the best approach. This woman? Uh... She is, she is so... Scared is what she is. Professional black woman trying to make it in the white male South. And then you come in, Mr. Loose Cannon, with your big plans and your big attitude. <laughs> attitude, maybe? <laughs> yeah, you, Conroy. And just be the you I fell in love with, and you'll be fine. All right, gang. I'm gonna tell you about my great great granddaddy, El Ferdinand de Burrito El Castillo Conroy. Now, see, he's a world famous explorer because he's the first man to swim from Spain all the way to North America. No, no. And from that day forward, they called this the Conroy Ocean. You lie, teacher man. Well, how do you know? Because there ain't no Conroy Ocean. You said it called that. Mr. Conroy, look on his oh, right. It's yeah. oh, you know <laughs> You're right. But see, now you know that you don't have to believe something just because I say it's true. See, we live in a free country. And what that means is we're free to disagree with what anyone says, even the teacher. Give me that. Hey, Prophet, Oscar, hey, just leave it on the floor, okay? You see, there was a great American, and his name was Ralph Waldo Emerson. And he believed we must always question rules and laws and not believe a thing's true just because the big cheese say so. All right, you know what? Y'all look a little tired. So let's take a nap. Everybody put your head down, close your eyes, take a little nap. And when I count to three, I want all you to pop up, open your eyes, and be wide awake, okay? One, two, three. Yep. You don't always hear what I'm saying, do you, Saul? <laughs> okay, hey. All right, guys, break it up. Twelve. Hey, gang, Saul reads lips. You're reading my lips right now without even thinking about it. So from now on, when you guys talk to Saul, I want you to face him. I want you to articulate your words. That way he can see the shape of your mouth and then he can understand. All right, are y'all gonna do that for me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, turn around. All right, everybody. Tell Saul you're gonna help him out. Yeah! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll help you, Saul. What you got, I don't want none of it. I come about Saul. Saul. My little grand, he in trouble? <laughs> Far from it, Mrs. Graves. He's the brightest student in the class. Shh. 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 So what you saying? I'm saying he's almost deaf. He's been keeping it a secret. Been that way since he was born. Well, the other children, they won't be teasing him anymore. Just thought you want to know. So long. Hey, gang, gang, hey. 
I bet you didn't know it. But this old oak, this is the original tree of knowledge. It is. It is. This tree knows everything, and I can prove it. <laughs> you see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you some hard questions, and you won't be able to get any of the answers right. Oh, man. But this old tree, it's going to help you. It's going to whisper that knowledge into your ears. <laughs> this tree is so smart, the knowledge oozes out of the branches. Y'all ready? No. Oh, come on. What's the longest stinking river in the whole wild world? Now. Good. And what continent is it in? In Africa. Uh -huh. Do I come from Africa? No, you from Ireland. Well, Ireland is a country in Africa. What is the largest desert in the world? Sahara. Mr. Conroy. Oh, man, here come the news. The school is here for education, not for all day recess. The state says if you are on school property, you have to abide by the rules. Y'all get your little narrow hineys out of the tree. Hold on, hold on. We're still in class. We're still in class. Class won't get us some trouble. Miss Brown, you're right. Heck, the whole state's right. Come on. Now, hold on, hold on. But there's one thing we can do. Y'all ever hear of a field trip? Yeah. yeah. You want to take one? Yeah. All right, let's go have one. Come on. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait. Get back. Get back here. Conroy! What's the nearest star? The sun! So, watch my lips. What's the closest planet to the sun? Mercury! What's the biggest country in the world? China! I live in China. No. Who saw the death go? Mrs. Brown had been educated in a private school where she learned the importance of what she called the fundamentals of refinement. Mr. Conroy. Hello, Mrs. Brown. I sure do appreciate this invitation. We'll see about that. I believe in education. Without it, these children haven't a chance. Exactly. That's exactly my position. I just don't think that harsh discipline is the answer. You cannot control those children without a strap. Well, you see, I think that... Yes, I do see, Mr. Conroy, I do. Well, then you must also see how important it is that these children get off the island. And I got a great idea how to well, do Well, whatever it is, I cannot allow it. They need fundamentals, not field trips. Why can't you understand that? They also need to see how the world works. This is good pie, by the way. Miss Conroy, you were not hired to show them how the world works. Excuse me for being blunt. I am not at all sure you know how it works. All her refinement couldn't hide the fact that she was obstinate and immovable. It might take me a couple of days to get her fixed up. You know, Zeke, this is all about... yours. Seriously? Thank oh. you. <laughs> Thank you. Here, okay, sweetie. let's have it. What's going on? What do you mean, what's going on? What do you think, Pipsqueak? You think something's going on? Huh? Mom, is he being a dork? <laughs> well, I got, uh, I got some good news and some very interesting news. Good first. Right. Zeke loaned me a boat. Uh, okay, good so far. And the really, really interesting news is that I invited 12 Yamacraw kids to a wedding. I gotta say, Conroy, you're starting to grow on me.
Not going no place. Staying. Our grandma just laughed. She laughed? She laughed real hard. She think you joking us. So nobody got permission? No, no sir. sir. Our grandma said no way. Wanna come but can't. Yeah. No means no. Why won't you allow these kids to go? I'll tell you why. I know that river. I lost three family in that river. They sink down like quarry rocks. When they come up, they's all swelled up like toady fish. I've been living on Yamacraw all these many years, and I ain't gonna lose no grands to that river. Nothing is gonna happen to them. I'll protect them with my life. You young. You don't know that river. That river can eat a man. I got Zeke Skimberry's boat, and there ain't a man around who knows the river better than Zeke. Why you want my little ones at your big fancy white wedding anyhow? Because these kids need as much mainland experience as they can get before they cross over. And besides, I think they're gonna have fun. You know, I, I know they're gonna have fun. Fun, huh? No. I just bet you know something about that. Miss Brown never come visit me one time. Not about Saul, not about nothing. Old Lady Glover, she never come neither, but that's on account of she figured I'd fetch old Betsy out of the house and chase her off. Mrs. Graves? I'm gonna take care of your grandchildren. I give you my word. This girl in the world's gonna be walking down here, okay? I want you to be good. You guys look great. You look beautiful today, baby. What's your name? Ethel. My name's Jenny. Oh, you that Jenny? <laughs> How come you here? He's my new daddy. I do. Do you, Barbara, take Pat to have and to hold from this day forward, in sickness and in health, in prosperity and adversity, for as long as you both shall live? I do. By the laws vested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. 
You may kiss the bride. Morning, Mr. Stone. I'm a little late for school, so maybe give me a ride? You a Nazi? No. Heard you drive one of them old Nazi cars. No, uh, um... I killed a bunch of Nazis. I'd kill more if I could. Give me a word to start with D. <laughs> Door, day, dip. Duh. All right, it's Prophet's turn again. Go ahead, bud. Dog. Dog, yeah, that's a good one. Now go ahead and spell it. D. O. D. these people? Do you have something against them? You are talking crazy. You know, hitting them the way that you do does not make them smarter. It doesn't encourage them to learn. If anything, it makes them fear school. And it probably even makes them avoid and ignore everything you're trying to teach them. You don't know what you're talking about. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just guessing. But one thing I do know is that you don't listen. Is that what you think? You don't control those children. You can't teach them. What you do is entertain them. Say, hey, get rowdy. And you say, all right, gang, break it up, break it up. Enough's enough. I hear you. I hear you all day long, Pat Conroy. Basketball training had given me a sense for the opposition strategy. And I was starting to get a feeling Mrs. Brown might have put a defensive play in motion when it suddenly revealed itself. Inside, Mr. Conroy. Mr. Bennington, what a surprise. 
Always a pleasure to see you, Esther. Your recent tardiness, Mr. Conroy, has been duly noted. Then there's the matter of this, this gas bill that you submitted for reimbursement. <laughs> I'm sure you don't expect our schools to pay for the gas that you use to get to work. Yeah, I do. But we don't pay for the other teachers to get to work. Well, how many of them take boats? Our county has no commuting allowance. Now, you were aware of that when we hired you on staff. Since then, I got married. We'll pay for your gas on Monday and Friday. Any other boat trips are considered recreational, which we expect you to bear the expense. Let me get this straight. So you think marriage is recreational, and being a responsible father, now that's a sport? That's not the point, Mr. Conroy. It sure as heck is the point. That's exactly the Mr. point. Conroy, please, do not fly off the handle. <laughs> Mrs. Brown, do you think I'm flying off the handle? I mean, as the principal of this school, you must have an opinion on my situation. You no, know, Mrs. Brown has nothing to do with it. Colleague to colleague, you think this is fair? Piedmont is behind us, right? Yeah, because it's my jurisdiction. Yeah, right, sure. Yeah, I am responsible for your position here. Okay, yeah. Well, guys gotta do what a guy's gotta do. You can't just walk away. Where do you think you're going? Well, see, I was told to follow a chain of command. Not to stop on the weakest link. How dare you? Now you take one more step and I swear you what? What, are you gonna fire me? Do you really think you have the authority to do that? It's late. I'm going home. Hold on, Conroy! Perhaps... We can work something out here. Democracy. Gotta love it. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 5 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift off! Yeah! Lift off. Right! Come on, let's hear it for the scientists and for Gordon and for Conrad and for Bean, huh? How about that, gang? Three brave astronauts have just gone to the moon. Is it like going to the moon? What? Well, yeah, Frank, you just heard him blast off. Mr. Conroy. Ain't going to no moon. Uh, well, gang, how, who else here doesn't think the Apollo's going to the moon? I don't think they're going to the moon. Ooh, Ooh, too far. And Ethel, you too? You say good, we question authority. Well, yeah, but I didn't mean me. How are these kids ever going to make it on the mainland if they don't think man walked on the moon? I know plenty of places in this country where they'd be right at home. Well, darling, that's the point of education, right? That they don't end up in those places? Man, if they could ever see the real thing. We'll take them to D.C. Oh, yeah, right. Mrs. Brown be totally into that. Dirty comes up with it. Oh, oh dirt. Oh, over here. Oh, All goes out to Oscar the spinner. Stolen by Saul the small. Oh, oh. good shot. Oh. Oh. One name I got. My man, you be Charles the Cool. Charles the Cool. Oh. 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 Who you be? Me? Yeah, you. I be. Pat the Rat.
Mr. Bennington, I have a real chance to reach these kids. Coffee? No, thank you. This is a chance to expand their horizons. How about some melon? No, huh? fine, thank it's you. It's delicious. No, thank you, really. By taking these kids into Washington, D.C., they're going to Mr. Conroy, I think it's a wonderful idea. Now, if you are prepared to shoulder all responsibility, guarantee that there is absolutely no cost to the county, well, you have our full and unwavering support. are divider lines. They they tell the driver which side of the road he can stay on. Now, you see, if they're dotted, it means he can pass another car. And if it's a double line, it means he can't pass. Just in line say all that? Yeah. Just in line say all that. Da -da 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 -da. Springtime came to Yamacraw with more bold promise than I'd experienced in some time. My spirit was uplifted, and my hopes were high for the children as graduation day approached. It is my great honor today to introduce the best friend Yamacraw ever had, Mr. Ezra Bennington. Boys and girls, good parents of Yamacraw, I just want to say that I think Yamacraw is as fine a school as any in this country, despite what some people might say. 
Now, sure, we got a few problems here. You show me a school in this country that doesn't have problems. I'll show you a cow without others. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Now, I remember when I first came here, we had a plethora of problems, didn't we? Didn't we? But I remember when I, I had to put in that electricity there, didn't I? Remember that? And the air conditioning. Well, we got a couple more things we got to clear up. the state requirements fair and square. Huh? I want you guys to know how proud I am of you. All right, congratulations. Okay, everybody, one last piece of business. With the consent of all you parents, Barbara and I would like to invite you all to our house across the river for a graduation party. Congratulations, Mr. Conroy. Thank you, Mrs. Brown. Your pecan pie is delicious. Mr. Conroy, it means that next year your services will no longer be required at Yamacro. So, in other words, I'm fired? Well, let's just put it this way you are expendable. Lovely party. Thank you. And uh, my regards to your wife. Could you please explain to me why I'm being fired? Because you have been consistently late. And it is against the rule for teachers to be late. No exception. And you, young man, you've been trying to make an exception of yourself all year. So you'd fire me for getting lost in the fog a couple times? If you didn't commute, you wouldn't be lost. And if you weren't lost, you wouldn't be late. So this is about my commuting? No, it's about your entire attitude. It's about your ignoring the chain of command. I have followed your blessed chain of command, link by link. That's why I'm here. You endangered the lives of those young children by taking them on a wild ride to Washington. Bennington gave his approval. Well, if he did, he exceeded his authority. He set me up for this. I will not pay for gas. I will not tolerate your lateness, and I will not tolerate your willful neglect of my authority. You are hereby dismissed from Yamacro, sir. What is the matter with you, boy? You're gonna let yourself be dishonored by some bow tie gas bag? Never took all nothing rougher than a golf club. Don't you know A. Conroy never backs down? A. Conroy takes crap from no man! Is there anything else? You know, Dr. P. Dr. P. Ma, you leave me no choice but to take my cause to the Board of Education. Your cause? Huh? Your cause, sir. You go right ahead. Well, I'm not worried. Not a little bit. Heck, I was told that Beaumont has the most democratic school system in the whole country. Oh, no! Your turn. 
You know they're going to load my record with, well, I don't know what, but whatever it is, they're going to make sure I never teach again. Well, can I ask you something? Are you sure this is about you righting a wrong, or is it you picking a fight? Listen, this is how I was raised. You fight or you fold. You win or you die. There's no middle ground. It's, it's a counter way. But are you sure it's your way? I'm dead sure. Is that you talking or your father? You're too good for them, Pat. In this case, there is a middle ground. You can choose to walk away. You've got the parents on track. They can take it from here. You know that, right? I can't go down. Not like this. Your move, Daddy. <sighs> Thank you, sweetie. It came to pass there was a meeting of the Beaumont County School Board. The regulars showed up right on time. And so did the irregulars. He the one, ain't he? The one over there with Benetton. Yes, ma'am, that's him. Uh -huh. I should have brought my bits out of that house all loaded up. Drop that man down where he should have been. Can't go around killing folks with buckshot at that. The whole world ain't like Yamacro. Hmm. Pity. You wear that tie every single time I see you. I owe you five bucks. I promise that. It's a great pleasure. <laughs> On the matter regarding Mr. Conroy's service on Yamacraw Island. The school board has reviewed Mr. Conroy's record of insubordination, gross neglect of duty, and conduct unbecoming a professional educator. Oh, hold on now. Hold on. Any more of that ruckus, we'll clear the room. <clears throat> Sir, may I speak to my record? Make it brief. Gross neglect of duty, conduct unbecoming, these all sound like very serious charges. Charges that could easily find their way into a court of law. Uh, Sonny boy, are you threatening this fine board with a lawsuit? Is that what you're Dr. doing Dr. Piedmont, here? this is my time. Dr. Piedmont has the floor. No, he doesn't. Folks, what you're getting here is just a little taste of this young man's obstreperous nature. Now, this is a young man who thinks he can take children on a field trip to our nation's capital without proper authorization. I had proper authorization. The Beaumont School Board rules to uphold its decision to terminate employment. Mr. Chairman. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Chairman, I only want... I just want to say... Go on, Ms. Brown. We don't have all night. But, yes, sir. Just want to say that... Um, Personally, as a colleague of Mr. Conroy, I find your decision unfair. Thank you, Mrs. Brown. This meeting is adjourned. Only one thing to do. We're going to get all the folks, kids too, everybody on Yamacraw go mark his name. And if they don't bring y'all back, we're going to strike the school. 
<laughs> Edna, I don't know. Ain't for you to know. Time for us to know. Time for Piedmont to know. Mr. Big Boss Superintendent. You ain't off the hot stove yet. <laughs> Think they do. Sticking to the word looks like. Conroy doesn't get reinstated, they're gonna strike the school. I'll find out. Bullhorn. The folks of Yamacraw read it right back, with no need to amplify their voice. Look now, look, I've got the most democratic school system in this country. This our school. Ain't no mainland school. We teach our children be our business. Ain't nothing to do with no big boss superintendent. Get out. Come on, get out. what you're thinking. A Conroy never backs down. A Conroy takes crap from no man. But you're not him. You're you. A loser teacher who can't hold a job because he loves kids too much. I love you. Did I ever tell you that? Not nearly enough.
Swiss Conroy. I appreciate what you said at the meeting. I know that wasn't easy. You might enjoy this. It really helped me. So long, Mrs. Brown. Summer now. Alright? We'll miss them shrimp. Alright now. Yeah. Got this here petition signed, just like I said. Every parent on the island signed it. Now we're gonna take it down to the next bold meeting and deliver the news. <laughs> Very well written. They'd be impressed. I know that I am. But I don't want you to do it. In the end, it's these kids who are going to end up losing. They lose if you don't teach them. We don't want our children hit no more. It ain't right. I think that maybe Mrs. Brown has started to see the light on that. And besides, there are plenty of other teachers. Most of them way smarter than me. Do you smart? Smart. smart. Hold on. Hold. Please. Hold. Please. Maybe y'all can't see it yet, but you've already won. That school is yours now. You stood your ground, and they got the message that you're in charge of your children's education. All you have to do now is stay involved. Always. And never back down. Never back down. this little girl who just started calling me daddy. I won't be sure it stays that way. Y'all look out for yourselves. He takes care of our own. Edna, you are a magnificent creature. No. You're a queen. Saint. Oh, all right, all right. Go on, man. Columbia! Go to the planet to the sun! Oh! 
Mercury! One time a man say, we got a question of rules. Angela! And not believe a thing just because the big T say it so. Ralph Waldo Emerson. I wondered then, as I do now, whose life got changed more? Was it theirs or mine? Kids, parents, the island, me. I knew nothing would ever be the same. It shouldn't be. The river was rising with the tide. The tide was rising in the country. The water was wide. I wish my students a safe crossing.